overall the uh, the packs. So we know the you know overall shape of the pack is going to be something like it's going to come down here. It's going to be shaped something like this. All right, that's the overall shape of the pack. But we're going to learn the muscles that make up the shape, just like we learn the muscles of the other things. And as we you know begin to add on the deltoid and everything, what you're going to start to see is how you get the shape of the arm when you add the tricep and so forth. So when you learn the muscles and how to put them on, then you'll automatically know the, the contours of the human body. Alright, so the uh, pectoralis major connects in a few places. So it connects on the ridge here of the collarbone, also called the clavicle. It'll connect all the way down here along the sternum. And then finally it'll connect to the, uh, it depends on the person, it can be either be the 6th or 7th rib, it'll just kind of come down here to the 6th or 7th rib. Then it's going to connect in three spaces here. There's like, almost like you can think of the, think of it as three different muscles, right? And that's how we're going to draw it. And it's going to connect right here. So it's going to go over the bicep. All right, so first we'll draw the edge where it connects here. So it kind of skips a little edge right there and connects all the way along the edge here. I actually want to go a little bit farther in, about like so. Goes along the clavicle or collarbone, like this. And then it's going to have the, the first muscle. We'll, we'll think of it as three different muscles. It, it's going to be on the very top. So it comes over here and it connects to the side of the humerus bone. goes over the bicep, connects to the side of the humerus bone. It actually connects to the inside groove, but it does go over the biceps, but it actually connects to the, like, it's kind of on the inside of this little groove here, I think, but we'll just attach it like this. And it kind of, this kind of comes up to about this corner here. This is the shape of the first muscle. This is the one on the top of the other ones, where it connects over here, it connects on top of the other muscles. And we'll go ahead and, actually I'll just use this one for right here, to show the ligament structure there. And then there's just going to be like a ligament structure along, not ligament, excuse me, tendon type structure. And we'll just make the very edge of this like that. It's going to come down, like I said, either to the sixth or seventh rib. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six. So six is the one that begins here, and then seven. And so not connect, it's not connected to the rib, but to the coastal margin. And it'll either be right about here, and then come up, or it's going to be down here, and then start to curve up like this. And depending on the person, you can actually get an interesting kind of look here where it kind of comes down like this, you know, where you have the muscle that looks like that. It depends how developed the muscle is. We'll come down to the seventh, and that's where it connects. So I'm just going to show the connection spot there. Use a smaller brush and just show a little bit of the, how the tendon muscle is connecting here. Just go ahead and draw a few. light lines separating, and then finally a few dark lines separating. That thick line wasn't supposed to be there. All right, so now we have that first part of the muscle. Now temporarily I'm going to go ahead, well, just know that this next muscle, the middle muscle, is going to go no, we'll do the next one, which which is on top. We'll we'll start with the most the ones that are most on top. So the bottom muscle is the next muscle that's most on top. It's under this muscle right where it connects to the bone, but it's on top of the middle one. We're gonna just kind of draw the basic shape of a peck here. It's gonna go like this. And it connects right up right up here you'll see part of it. So it kind of connects to this upper part. This connects to the lower part of the arm, this connects to the upper part, and the part connects to the middle. And it's going to come down. We'll just kind of shape it like this. There we 
we go. I'm going to pick this gray color, just kind of. Okay, for some reason I'm not picking gray. Just add a few lines like that. This is all cartilage up here as well. Make a darker color to show the separation between these two. I'll just use black. I want to show there's a clear separation between that where it connects there and there. Now we're just going to show a little bit of muscle like so. Show darkness right, right there where it's kind of overlapping. And then finally we have the middle muscle. And it's attached under all of these two muscles. It attaches in the middle underneath these two. What's important though is that just that you know the general area where the, where the muscle attaches, which is just on that part of the humerus bone. This is important to remember when someone's lifting their arm and also helps understand how the armpit is formed with the pectoral muscle. We're going to add some lines now. First I want to, I want to show the separation here the thicker this also helps understand when you draw the pec muscle why you draw certain lines within the pec muscle Right now, I'm going to show the part that if you were to draw the muscle as it's developed, the part you're going to see more is here, like this. So this is the part of the muscle you see more when you're drawing it, and then the you know the figure will come out here and so forth. You'll have the abs and whatnot. But I just want to show that that lasso part where it connects on there is a lot weaker, and when you build the muscle, it's going to kind of have this shape to it. So it's not going to it's not going to have really that shape to it. So it's going to be more right around here. And this under part here, if you do, it's going to be tucked under and shaded because it's thinner, and the other parts stick out more. So just keep that in mind. It'll help when you're when you're drawing your figures to understand. But it's really important to understand how this pec works and that, the, that it goes over the bicep and the deltoid goes over both of them. Right, so then for your exercise, go ahead and, and you know, I never, I didn't even have you do exercise for the pectoral, the minor, because, or the, the pectoralis minor, because I, it's not important, I don't, it's really not, so I just, just put it there just because. Right, just for you to know that it's there, just to be thorough. Okay, let's go ahead and draw on this side now, and we'll have the same thing. But first, do your exercises, which is to draw this about three to five times. It's, it's a pretty easy muscle to memorize, and it's not very complicated. So it shouldn't take you very long to, to memorize this, going back and forth, drawing it from memory, drawing it from reference to memory reference. And then don't look at it. Cover up your paper or cover up this side when you draw this side over here. That way, you're learning to draw the, the pectoral muscle from both sides. Again, it shouldn't be too hard to do because it's a pretty simple muscle. And actually, before I draw this side, I just want to show a few more of these little ridges coming in. Just to show, you know, that there is a kind of like tendon structure there. All right, so just like before, we'll draw. Actually, this time. Let's draw the middle one first. No, we'll draw the top one first again. So remember how far it comes down, about halfway down the clavicle. Comes and connects to the humerus bone. And then it kind of comes here, connects all along the edge like so. I'm going to draw the... First I'll go ahead and color this in.
if you're following along and you're drawing with pencil, you know, you do the same thing, but you just draw with the pencil. So you would, you know, sketch this in, the, the outer shape of it, then you would draw the little tendon lines. Then, you know, if you want to use like an eraser to erase some and draw the lighter lines and draw some of the darker, thicker lines. Just push harder on your pencil or use a darker pencil if you want to. Right now we'll draw the bottom. And we're drawing it as if it's not very, the person's not very built. And I should have actually connected that a little bit lower or even just made it thinner. And then this way you can see where this one's connecting. Remember, not everyone uh, goes down to the seventh coastal cartilage there. Sometimes only goes down to the sixth. So just keep that in mind. Just going to show a few of these little breaks here in the cartilage. Just go and add some highlights to the middle. Add some darker lines. I want to make the whole edge here dark as well. Make this dark right here. And also knowing that there's these muscles can help you kind of figure out. And sometimes you can have this, you know, darker line here in the middle, uh, and, you know, of that muscle there. Just knowing the the direction of these lines though, the fibers, will help you when you're drawing a very defined muscle, a very defined chest, which we will go through later on. You're going to see how that will help you do that to get that proper definition where you want it. You know the muscle, you know the way the fibers go, and so you're going to be able to draw much more realistic pecs from your imagination without any effort. It becomes effortless. You reach this stage of I guess a bliss. It's just a, it's really awesome. It's a stage of relaxation when you can just draw from your mind. And there isn't much thinking involved. You're just, you're just doing it. And to reach that stage is really awesome. And that's why I'm so inspired to make tutorials that are affordable for people because I want them to be able to experience that for themselves. I remember how much I used to not like drawing that much. I mean, I would draw. I mean, I remember at first I used to love drawing, just from reference, you know, that was fun. But after a while that got old, and I'm just like, I don't know, I kind of started losing my love for art until I learned how to draw from my mind. And when I'm able to start, you know, when I was able to start drawing from my mind and creating these really awesome images, that's when I'm like, yeah, now I'm loving art, and I've been loving ever since, so. All right, so now we have the pec muscles from the front, and uh, also called the pectoralis major. As you can see, the, the pecs actually take take up quite a bit of space, and I want to show you from a photograph that this is indeed true. Actually, I apologize. Because this is a, uh, a paid-for course, I'd have to go and, and find a photo that I have reference or that I have rights to use under so in, in, a, in a product that I sell, So because it's not a free product. But nonetheless, just you know, go check out some photos on like Google Images, and then what you'll see is that you have the, the navel is right about here because you know the love handles they attach to the clavicle they come up here right so when you have the I'm just calling love handles for now and you have your belly button that right around this area you're gonna see you know the rib cage and you have your abdominal muscles and so forth what's in, what's important to see the chest you know it comes down way down here and you, know, you might even draw it where it comes out more like this it depends if the chest is more developed this muscle can actually come down more like this and have a more of a shape like this in fact sometimes the um, the pack can be so developed that it has kind of a shape like this where it kind of comes down like so and that could be due to developing the muscle underneath here 
that attaches and uh, yeah, maybe it, it comes out a little bit and you get this kind of look here but anyway just ch check out some chest muscles and you're gonna see that they come down quite far like take the lowest part of the chest muscles and draw a line straight across where they intersect with the arm and you're gonna see it comes down quite far so just know that when you're drawing your figure and you have your stick man and everything and you kinda draw on your stick man that you know you know whatever you know form you decide to use for your stick figure you know what they want to show the hips and the legs like this that you have the that when you know where your chest is going to be, you know like where your sternum, but how far your sternum is, because you've mastered the skeleton already, and so you know how you have this space between these ratios here, between the rib cage, and between the top of the pelvis, and because you know this, you know where the belly button's going to be. You know, you know, once we get there, we haven't got there yet, but because you know the skeleton, then you know, okay, that's about how long the sternum goes down. So I know starting from here is where I can start putting my chest in, and so the measurements. It's something you want to, you know, keep in mind. You like you have the total width of your, from here down to here, you know, about halfway, you know, a little bit, not not quite halfway, but almost halfway, between the top of here and here, you have your middle section. That's the bottom. That's where the chest begins, or the bottom of the sternum. And also, you know, check out Mastering the Human Figure. It has a lot of, diff you know, cool proportions that you're gonna to want to memorize as well. That will really help when you're drawing your figure. Okay, so I can go and erase all this now. Not needed. Next, we'll draw the uh, pec from the side view. You can probably start to figure it out because you know you have, you know that you have this top part here that connects like this. You know it comes down, connects to the side of the humerus. Right, you know, you know about where it connects over here, about how far down, because you can see how far down it connects here. Doesn't connect too far down. And then you have the. Let's go ahead and just add a little bit of the tendon here. Actually, I like to add that. I like to add that last. So, you know the direction that these flow. The lines flow toward this way. Add a few highlight lines here in the center. All right. Then we'll have the bottom one, which you know just connects a little bit above here, comes underneath, and we know that how many ribs it comes down to, that we know it comes down to the part where, uh, well basically the sixth or, or seventh rib, you need to know about how far down that is where you reach the sixth or seventh rib. So you can see, if you turn this off, you see the first rib, so one, two, three, four, five, six. We know it's going to be coming down to about this area here. Right, so know also it kind of curves in. It kind of has this curved in here from the side view. So it kind of has a shape like where it kind of curves in like this, then comes down and connects to one, two, three, four, five, six around right around here and it's a little bit to the seventh. So that's the overall shape of it. We know it goes underneath the other one. Kind of comes over here. And from the side view you can kind of see the we won't make it too buff. But you can kind of see it has the whole pec will kind of come out like this. Because these muscles can build up. Now, of course, if the person doesn't work out much, it's going to be pretty flat and more towards the rib cage, but it's still going to have some, you know, thickness to it. Might not be much, but it'll be some. I'm going to go ahead and just add in the middle space as well. Alright, so we know the main shape then from the side view is about like so. And you can see, if you draw a line straight across, 
you can tell that it's, it's coming to around the same uh, the same space. You just kind of reshape this a little bit though. It's supposed to be connecting right there, then coming out and up. All right, so that's the basic shape. Let's go ahead and add uh, some dark lines here. We know that these lines kind of come up and like this, and everything starts to come toward the center. We have horizontal lines. And we'll just kind of go like this. I like to do this particular tutorial in color because it makes it easier, I think it makes it easier to distinguish the the muscles from the bones and everything rather than doing it in like black and white or drawing in, in black and white or with pencil or something. I still want to show this whole and actually um, when the muscle sticks out this far we can't really see the insertion point so much where it inserts. We can see where it inserts there on the collarbone but you can't really see when we develop the muscle out like this this large we can't see over here where it develops because we can't see where it's connecting because it's folding it's folding out and around so if we looked at it from like the underside of the pec muscle like we take this shape here we're looking up at the person so it kinda it kinda connects to the arm and it comes out like this and then it comes up and so where the muscle, it's coming up like this, right? So the muscle is coming over like this, coming over like this, and there's this dip then right here, and that's where it's connecting. So if you're looking from this angle, it this is like a cliff dropping off, and you can't see beyond it. You're only seeing to here. So from the side view, you're only seeing to here where the muscles, well maybe a little bit further, where the muscles are sticking out. And if the muscle has more of a arch like this to it, it it's not as flat because some but some people's pecs are more flat than drop off. Others are more like a they had the highest point here in the middle. If that's the case, then from the side view, that's the part that's sticking out the most, and that's the part you're going to see. You're not going to see any of this that, that droops down like a mountain or a hill. It's like a hill going like this. And so when you look from the side, you're just seeing there, and all this is out of your view, right? So all these planes are out of your view. Go ahead and erase this. Right, so keep in mind that's what we're seeing then is we're seeing it pop out and we're not seeing it come turn back around to the side and connect to the sternum so that's why you're not going to see the cartilage or excuse me the uh, the tendon on that side you're not going to see any of this right here All right so now for the exercise I want you to go ahead and draw the side view draw the pec the pec from the side view a few times for reference and then draw a few times from memory go back and forth until you feel pretty comfortable drawing it from memory and it you know it's in your it's in your head and you go okay this is the you know the basic shape that the pec has from the side view if you want you can also draw it over here draw the, draw the pec muscle again from the side view and we'll go ahead and just do the basic shape here really quick so we know the different parts it connects and so you have this the top part here we know it's going to connect along like this and it comes, this first part comes down the second part is here and this comes down over here, it has this crisscross effect and we know it kind of has more, it kind of turns in more here and it comes to right about here and it probably turns in even more it comes out a little bit like this depends how you know big the person is but this is the overall shape. Let's go ahead and speed this process up a little bit. And then I'll just color in these parts here. Okay, so if you just do it very quickly, in you know, it depends on the person too. Like um, sometimes the person you know, they might have. Okay, cool. So, I'm not drawing on that. No, I am drawing under that layer. They might have more. It might swoop in even more like this before it comes down to 
for this part here. Just like I said, it depends on person. Like here, we have it more like that, so might as well make it match. It's going to take a dark color here. Oh, that's the eraser. No wonder it's not dark. Let's use the size three brush. Then we'll have this bottom muscle here. So I'm keeping this, you know, quick. And easy. We are gonna just use that color for the cartilage. Yeah, I should probably stick to what color I've been using. Make sure the cartilage there and there. Not cartilage, but tendon tendon tissue. Okay. Right, so lastly we'll draw the pec muscles from the three force view. Because we know the or origin the origination of the muscles and we can see the angle we can see okay from this angle we can see we can actually see the insertion points remember there's a space between the pec muscles and it kind of comes around like this and then it comes up so we know that you know the basic shape here we know that this bottom muscle when it comes up it attaches to the upper part here it comes down like so and the top one crisscrosses over that on top of it and it comes like so. You know it inserts into the humerus. So you know all the insertion points and you know you already have the skeleton memorized. This is why it's so important to memorize the skeleton because when you have the skeleton memorized you can reduce the skeleton in your mind. Right and when we're drawing from uh, the three quarters view we should also keep in mind there is still this I don't want to mess up that other muscle there, but it kind of curves in more like this. You know, it's kind of a sort of a side view. I'm just going to do it this way instead of the other trick I did. Put in the whole mass there. Draw some tendon here. All along here. So I kind of do it like this. This will be faster. Finally, we'll use a dark color here to separate the muscles. And then to show the fibers, the directions they go. Antique sideways make this easier to pull these lines. There we go. Add some highlights here to the center. And notice again, we're not adding any sort of depth to these muscles yet as far as the form of the muscle goes. We'll get into that later. Right now, obviously, from these from this three-quarter view, we're also going to be able to see the other pec a little bit. We know that it's going to connect like so. It's going to come down. And this is where it's kind of more of a, a side view, but we know it's going to kind of come down like this. We'll be able to see the depth of it. The muscle is not going to be just flat. It's going to have some depth like this. Unless the person's really skinny, we're going to add a little bit of depth to the muscle. 
like so. And so now we're kind of seeing the inside of that mountain, and then it rolls over. And let's go ahead and actually use gray really fast and just kind of show the tendon fibers here where it connects. And then a little bit down here, right here. Right now we use a dark color. And we still want to show where these muscles originate. We're still going to have this upper muscle where it kind of comes down like this. And then we're going to have this kind of middle section where it kind of comes up like this. And we want to show the direction of these fibers so that we know the overall direction of this muscle matches. And it, so it does change a little bit. You know it comes up like this on this angle because that's going down around and connecting to the arm just come up. So you still have the same down and up and then horizontal lines that we had before. Just looks a little different from this view. But because you know the direction of everything, you're able to draw this correctly. Right, so we can see we're filling out the pec muscles now, and that's the all that's all the viewpoints we need to be concerned with when drawing the pec muscles. We're not, we're not going to see the pecs from here or here. Uh, when we get to uh, the physiology, the outside physiology of the of the anatomy, some females, if their breasts are big enough, might be visible way out here. Um, you might be able to see some of the breast that's laying on the rib cage, and then some of it hangs outside. You might be able to see a little bit of that. So we'll, we might, you know, get into that from the back view. But as far as um, that's it, you know, their breasts are very huge. But uh, for the male, this is all we need to see. All right. So I like to, you know, try to make the videos each video as long as possible. But I don't know if I want to also add the deltoid to the same video because then the video is going to be like pushing over an hour. But yeah, it'll definitely be pushing over an hour. So I'm going to go ahead and just stop it here at almost 40 minutes. And we'll just call that one uh, pec. So there you go. The next muscle we work on is the deltoid or shoulder muscle. One more quick word, actually. You might be wondering, um, you know, how is this going to help me exactly when, when we're drawing this? And, you know, I should probably be more consistent here. Uh, with this front muscle and make it more developed like I did others. At first I was making it more flat and skinny um, thinking that that might have been a better way to approach it uh, but now I'm thinking the better way to approach the muscle is as, is as if it's developed. So to be consistent here really quick if you've already memorized this that's fine all we're going to do is just bring it down because it's just all it, all it is is making the person a little bit more developed to be more consistent with what we you know, what we've been drawing from the other views. And when we go over with this, when we go, when we wrap skin over the human body, when, after we learn all the muscles, and we wrap the skin over the human body, you're going to see how beneficial it is to know not only the, the where the muscles attach and everything, because that just helps you figure out quickly from your mind how to draw the figure from any position. You're like, okay, I got all this information in my head. And by the way, if you haven't done exercises, you probably should do them. I know I'm getting my mind's getting caught up here, but um, I think you already did the exercise for this. Do the exercise for this. Um, you just assume every time we, we do a new a new angle or something, you do the exercises. You draw it three to five times from reference. Draw it from memory. Draw it from reference until it looks right and you feel comfortable drawing it from memory. What's going to happen though, when you have all this information in your mind, where muscles attach, and you know, okay, the arm arm moves this way and this way, you know the skeletal structure, you know the arm can move up this way, it can move inwards, it can move toward us, it can move away from us. All these different movements and where this muscle is attached, you know, hey, if the arm moves up here, like up this way, you know this muscle has to stretch and still attach to that part of the muscle, to that part of the arm, that part of the bone, and you know the, the deltoid, it still has to come attached to the side of the bone, and so you know you're going to get this kind of look here with the deltoid, excuse me, you're going to get this kind of look here where it kind of curves and turns into the pec muscle like this and kind of has this kind of S-curve. It kind of comes in you know, you kind of get that look there from a human figure and then you can see that one muscle that we learned a long time ago. Remember that was the coral brachialis and 
we can see that muscle here, and then and then you're going to see the bicep come off like this and so forth, and then the tricep down here, and then these muscles. And it's important to, to know that because when you, in other words, you might be wondering, why do I have to learn all these muscles? Uh, what's really the important, oh, see, sorry, I, I was drawing over this, so hopefully I have enough back history, I think I do, to go back and delete all that, so I don't have to accidentally repaint it. Cool. Go ahead and save this so I don't mess up with anything. Right, so um, when you learn all the muscles and insertions and where they go, you've already mastered the skeleton. If you haven't, go back and master the skeleton. It's really very important because that's, mastering the skeleton is the baseline of the stick figure. And so if you go, if you go through the master of the human figure course first, you know that mastering that stick figure is so vitally important. Now your stick figure is to a whole new level. So what this does is it reinforces all information you have in your brain that you've gained from Master the Human Figure, and now you're able to go, oh, I can see muscles attached here and here, and it's going to help you understand exactly how the muscles should look when the arm moves around, when the leg moves around, and I just gave a quick example of the arm moving up there. Knowing where muscles attach, you're just going to easily be able to put those muscles together. And also the fibers, the, the direction in which the fibers of the muscles are moving is important because when you draw someone very buff and ripped and flexing you know where to draw those stretch marks within the muscle and when we add the skin on it especially like the back and stuff you can really see oh okay now I get exactly why there's this line on the human figure why we shade that in you know why there's that shading that shaded area of that back muscle if you've already watched the one of my back tutorial muscles, which is kind of done like this, but not nearly as detailed, and when we go to the back, we'll get a lot more detail than the, in that video, then you already kind of know what I'm talking about. Right, so very important to learn the muscles, so don't skip this. Very important to learn the skeleton. Don't skip it. I can't stress enough. I know I've been saying it a lot, but I know how easy it is to get lazy. Um, I myself have got very lazy when I was learning how to draw, and I skipped parts and stuff, and I, you know, I just wasted time. I had to go back and do it all over again anyway. I had to go and learn this stuff, so don't cut yourself short. You already paid for the course. Why not put the time in?